In this video, I'm going to take you through 10 Power BI workspace design considerations you should be thinking about in your own environment. Hi, my name is Peter, and I help guide organizations in their journey of data analytics and AI, uh, particularly around the Microsoft ecosystem. And I wanted to impart with you some of the things I see um, through my team, working with my clients, as uh, I was saying so best practice, but things you should be considering as part of rolling out Power BI. A lot of this will be a best practice, but how you think about these considerations as part of how you um, use Power BI and grow your Power BI capability and maturity. Uh, if you like what you hear in this video and um, have any comments, please uh, hit the like button below and or add some comments to be sure to subscribe for any future updates. So let's look at the first one. And the first consideration is certainly, um, and now it sounds obvious, but organizing your workspaces. Now, a typical way is by function or department, not just lumping a range of different reports and data sets uh, inside the same workspace. Try not to mix unrelated reports together. And that makes it really easy to get things organized and easy to find and, and as part of the We'll talk about uh, in the next item around how we keep the data security in check as well. So let's look at that next one, which is having clear access controls. So making sure we have the right roles, uh, making sure that if there's sensitive data that only the people who need access to that uh, is done. And one way that we like to encourage organizations to do that is using role-based access controls. Uh, and define these roles can view, contribute, and administer different content. And typically we tie those to um, Active Directory or Intra ID groups to make it really easy to administer on the back end. But with the flexibility you have, you can also then use that to assign individual names against workspaces and their roles. Having a clear definition will make it simple to maintain going forward. The third item in our uh, considerations for workspace design is naming conventions. So having a standard set of naming conventions, whether it's for workspace names, data set names, uh, report namings, can just help with discoverability and that organization, not just your workspaces, but then what's inside those workspaces as well. So maybe consider using a prefix to identify, say, a business function around the workspace name, for example. So it might be you know, finance underscore reports. And that will then help with the consistency and then troubleshooting diagnosis across um, your organization. This can be hard to implement, especially when you enable people to manage their own workspaces, create their own reports, but as part of the building community practice or helping with governance guidelines, this can be something everyone can adopt and, uh, and, and use to help them understand the best, best ways to keep things uh, easy to find, diagnose, troubleshoot, and of course, use. Speaking of usage, we're gonna think about leveraging data set and semantic model reusability. The simplest way to get started with Power BI is to publish your data set and reports all in one workspace. But what if you need to create another report off that same data set or the same semantic model? Do you upload that again or connect it in and redevelop that model in a different workspace? Well, the good news is you can actually create workspaces to essentially host a data set and or semantic model and have that as a designated workspace just for that purpose. Then you can create separate workspaces just for reports. So separating out those two, two key functions. And that can help you um, avoid uh, redundancy in your data, uh, having sprawl of the same data and helps us keep things well structured and you manage it in one place and that way you can optimize it and create that reusability for people to build their own reports, perhaps of a uh, corporate managed you know, data set and semantic model. And no doubt as usage grows, there'll be lots of changes in your environment and keeping track of versions is really important. It's a good practice that comes after having done this a while. So make sure that as you're making changes, you have access to old versions in case functionality breaks or needs to be restored. So you could use version numbering inside of that namespace, or you manage that through things like a code repository 
um, having clear labels even on the user uh, interface to have last updated and version numbers can help people understand what's been changing. And maybe a hyperlink to a, a change log of sorts somewhere in your intranet can also help with understanding you know, updates have been made to that report. So this next one around monitoring usage and optimizing performance. So it's part of a design consideration. It's also something that's around the maintenance ongoing use of, of your Power BI workspaces. So part of it is around what are people using? How are they using it? Are they using it? It's quite typical. There's sprawl of reports. We see this when we look at whether it's Power BI or other systems. Reports are just created and used once. So how do you monitor usage and see what is working and what's not working? And that can inform you know, changes and updates to your, your workspace design and the use of those, optimizing those. It's not just about the usage, it's around the performance you have around the data sets um, and end-to-end -end, you know, data movement, particularly in uh, thinking about the Power BI style sort of workspaces. And it might mean you know, uh, optimizing data sets by removing unused columns or pre-aggregating data so you're not running those calculations uh, on the fly. Um, and making sure you think about what type of mode you use, whether it's a direct, direct query or import or a data lake query mode uh, as, as, as appropriate as well, just then to make sure it's an optimal experience for your end users. Number seven, using workspaces separating development and production. And similarly, using it for other you know, stages if you have a need, say for a test, UAT, training. It, the makeup is not matter. What's important is that if you should maintain separate workspaces for separate purposes and keeping production just for production usage. And think about then the way you deploy and publish reports uh, and data sets and supporting artifacts in a systemized manner by publishing those to a development workspace, having the right testing, then to say a test or QA environment, then to production. And that separation really helps with good um, practices around managing change to those artifacts. And the way we manage that um, yeah, historically would, would have separate, completely separate environments. But in a Power BI world, we think about um, using those like, the name conventions I've mentioned before and applying security uh, permissions to make sure that general users won't have access to a development instance, for example, and not get confused. And this ties into my next point around um, uh, user experiences, maybe even labeling uh, on the report themselves, whether they uh, are in a production use or it's for say testing or training purposes. So it helps the user understand when looking at the data and the report, I'm in the right place. So this goes a bit more into the look and feel the artifacts, um, sorry, in the workspace uh, considerations, but creating consistent user experience uh, or set of experiences is important. This really ties together a few things around you know, naming conventions, workspace design, talk, talked about the different environments. Having a consistent way of doing things across your organization will help set the right patterns. I've seen some instances where organizations have a, a great navigation experience for users. They have to think about what workspace they're in. They land in one place every time they can navigate through hyperlinks to the right report um, as, as needed. So there's lots of opportunities to think about how we leverage Power BI and create that good user experience. While I'm on the topic, I will touch on you know, having standard layouts and branding can be helpful as well. It's a common theme, um, just real helps that user experience, understanding the kind of visual cues that you might use in your organization to help from, um, identify or promote certain um, attributes or certain, certain facts that people would use and just helps reduce that friction when people have to interpret data and they can make the best use of that. So number nine is enabling data lineage and discovery. So depending on whether you're using Power BI or you're using Fabric or you've got um, Purview for data governance deployed, there's various levels of this, but data lineage uh, and discovery is quite simply the ability to understand how do I connect a report or where my report is connected to from a source system and what processes have gone in between. Now, depending on the tools you have access to, it might be very simple around what data sets are published um, through to down to the, the, the table level 
of where the information came from. This is something that really helps with traceability of data. So you can answer questions around where did that come from if people question your data. Uh, and it helps build trust because if you know it's coming from the right sources, which are uh, you know, well managed or coming from source systems, then you've got some assurances that this information in this report is going to be um, of, of, of likely trusted value. So enabling it to start data discovery, having a data catalog helps support then the ability to find information. And uh, what it does tie into workspace design because you want to make sure that you know, if you're thinking about decoupling, say your data sets from your reports, that, um, and a lot of this is automatic, but it's visible and able, people are able to see how this, this is useful. Um, not only is it good for the business user, but also then for those uh, report developers or people troubleshooting information or queries about data, they can also use that to track um, what is happening rather than diving into uh, detail. It might be very clear from a lineage perspective around uh, how they can find a root cause of, say, an anomaly in the reporting data. And the last consideration I'll share with you in this video is around uh, data certification and endorsement in implementing these features. Again, tied into that last point uh, around um, understanding you know, discoverability of your data, you can also promote data sets and reports as uh, sort of trusted, verified, well curated, tested um, uh, reports and data sets that people can rely on. So it's an assertion of that information coming from some sort of central trusted source. And this separates out, say, reports that have been curated and tested um, via a, uh, through a standards process and quality assurance versus someone maybe using a data set for ad hoc analysis that may have applied some different business logic uh, or maybe pulling in information from a, um, a, a different data source. For example, if they've um, um, point, does some updates say in a spreadsheet and augmenting data together, maybe that's skewing some numbers or they've you know, um, done made some error in a calculation, for example. So using this certification endorsement and um, the practice around doing that helps with things like data quality um, and helps pick in the self-service environment so that you can start allowing people to create their own workspaces or create their reports in workspaces and be able to see differences between those that are um, verified versus those are not. So there you have it, 10 Power BI workspace design considerations that you can uh, use right now. Maybe you're using some of them, maybe you're using all of them, uh, in which case that'd be fantastic. But certainly think about that, how you're implementing Power BI today in your organization, and hopefully there's some tips here that you can um, use to improve how you operate and manage your Power BI environment. If this was useful, please uh, leave a comment below, hit the like button, and be sure to subscribe for any future videos.